So for more now on that ISIS claim, we've reached Rukmini Kalamaki. She is a correspondent for the New York Times and has reported extensively on al-Qaeda and ISIS. There were a couple of things, uh, Rukmini, that, that stood out for you in the phrasing of the claim. And part of it says, a soldier of the Islamic State, and he responded to the call to target citizens of coalition countries. So what is significant okay. about that phrasing? The phrasing that refers to responding to calls to target coalition countries, that refers to a famous speech that was put out in 2014 by ISIS's then spokesman Abu Muhammad al adnani where they called on people who could not travel to the Islamic State, who were still back home in Western countries and elsewhere in the world, to carry out attacks in situ, in their communities, in any way they could. It was in that speech that they spoke about using cars to run people over, even using rocks uh, to use them to smash the heads of, uh, of their enemies. So what that phrasing indicates is that from ISIS's perspective, this is a man who was most likely self-radicalized, who was was inspired by their propaganda and not somebody who actually traveled to, to Syria or who took more, um, more concrete direction from the group. Now, the claim wasn't immediate, right? It came uh, more than 48 hours after the attack. What should we make of that? That's not untypical. Uh, we have seen uh, we have seen claims that have come out in a couple of hours after the attack, um, and everything to uh, to a couple of days after the attack. So that is not that is not something that that concerns me. What do you make of what uh, the Toronto Police Chief said, saying at this point there's no evidence to suggest that um, ISIS is responsible for this, either through insp inspiration or, or whatever? What I would like to know from the Canadian police is what type of what type of searches they have been able to do. Have they so far been able to find uh, the shooter's phone? Have they unlocked it? Have they been able to look in in his various chats? Um, does he have Telegram on his phone or on any other devices? And Telegram is searches? Telegram significant because. Yeah. Telegram is the preferred app uh, that ISIS members use um, to, uh, to to push out their propaganda. Typically, we see that these young men are uh, have this have this app on their phones, and are inside these ISIS chat rooms. If if the claim by ISIS is to be, to be believed, and I need to stress that that so far we do not know if this ISIS mm -hmm. claim is correct. Hussein's family said he suffered from mental illness. Tell us why that's significant with respect to this claim. So I think that there's a perception that if somebody is mentally ill, um, that they therefore cannot be a jihadist, they cannot be, be a member of a terrorist group. And in fact, the two things can coexist. ISIS is a group that is trying to attack the West in any way it can. It is reaching out, it is, it is setting a very wide net on the internet, um, and it is looking for anyone that is willing to do its bidding. As it so happens, people who are mentally ill are vulnerable uh, in ways that people who are not mentally ill are not. Um, I, I spent a lot of time uh, in uh, on the western uh, on the western coast of the United States, uh, several months uh, reporting on a story of a young woman who is being aggressively recruited uh, by ISIS, and she suffered from fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, that was it, it was in part her her mental impairments that made her open to the suggestions of this group. So I think that what we need to be cautious of is to not think that because somebody is mentally ill that therefore that means that they that they were not um, inspired mm -hmm. by this group. To ISIS, the two are the same. Okay, and just finally, uh, you, you raised some questions that you still have regarding evidence that's been collected. What what do you think is key here? What are you waiting as you study this? What are you waiting to see? Well, a couple of things, Andrew. If if this claim had come out in 2016 or 2017, I would have told you um, I would have told you uh, that that in general, ISIS claims um, are more correct than they are not correct. We have seen far more times that that they claim something, authorities come out and say, "Oh, we see no evidence," only for the evidence to emerge months later. Hmm. In recent months. Uh, ISIS has faced enormous setbacks, and they have faced enormous setbacks, um, especially not just territorially, but also in terms of their media operations. Numerous members of their media apparatus have been killed in airstrikes and so on. And uh, in and recently, we have seen incorrect claims. The most the most um, the most noticeable one was the claim that the Las Vegas attack, uh, which resulted in in the death of dozens uh, in America, that that was ISIS. No evidence has emerged to suggest that. that is true. Um, so, so we are dealing with a terrorist group that has been diminished, 
uh, and uh, whose media apparatus has been diminished. And so the, the confidence I used to have in their claims is no longer there. Um, once again, what I am looking for now is to see what the police reveal. Mm -hmm. And the key thing is his electronics. Rukmini, it was really interesting getting your insight. Thank you. Thank you. Rukmini Kalamaki of The New York Times.